On first glance, gamers might mistakenly take Windbound by developer Five Live Studios for a simple Zelda clone. The influence of both Breath of the Wild and Wind Waker seems apparent, not only through its game mechanics, but its art design. However, upon playing, I quickly realized Windbound deviated from my preconceptions and focused more on outright survival above all else. While its presentation is gorgeous, unfortunately the rest of Windbound doesn't come together for a very compelling experience. Windbound has players assume the role of Kara, a warrior who begins the journey encountering a huge sea creature. Not long after she awakens, she finds herself shipwrecked and stranded on a mysterious island. With basically no real idea of where you are, you must piece together various tools, craft weapons, hunt, and sail across the sea to find your way home. Windbound is first and foremost a survival game. While those familiar with the genre are most likely aware of the notorious difficulty survival games tend to have, Windbound gives players a few options on how to approach the genre. You can play as the more traditional survivalist mode, which has you return to the beginning of the adventure, losing most of your items you collected if you fail. Or you can play Story Mode, which death only returns you to the beginning of your current chapter. Story Mode allows combat to be more approachable, and players are allowed to keep most of their progress. Even though the game isn't overly challenging, it's nice that players have these options. Survival is mostly streamlined you to focus on hunger, which is represented by an endurance bar that indicates how full Car is. Everything runs smoother when you're full, as you can accomplish things quicker. However, the hungrier you get, the less endurance you can expend. When it's depleted, you will quickly lose health. Hunting comes into play to prevent you from dying, but you can also collect berries and mushrooms. Eating items raw is an option, but there are more effective ways of restoring your health, such as sitting down and cooking a nice meal. However, cooking does take a bit of time, but if you have the supplies and aren't risking immediate starvation, it's worth it. Endurance is needed for any strenuous activities like sprinting, attacking, or swimming. Still, there are actually two endurance bars that need to be addressed. The first yellow bar can be recovered quickly, while the second one takes much longer to recover. Weapons consist of close-range melee items like the knife or spear to the longer-range weapons like the slingshot or bow. I found myself mostly sticking to close-range weapons for weaker animals while hitting stronger animals at a distance. Some animals are fun to encounter as each provides little items for your quest. Still, I only discovered about 10 different species throughout the entire game, where only one or two new animals were introduced each chapter. With the number of islands you can visit, it seems like a broader array of animals would have gone a long way to make each island feel worthy of exploring. Each playthrough maps are procedurally generated. It's an enticing idea on paper, but in practice it doesn't always feel like the unique experience it's perhaps meant to. Trains can be very similar, and even though islands may have different placement on the map, getting there can feel tedious every time. Windbound finds you just as much on the sea, if not more than on land. Crafting boats to get anywhere is essential. You are given the option of crafting a few different kinds of boats, but the significant differences lie in sailing or paddling. Sailing does seem a bit faster if the winds are in your favor, but you're at the complete mercy of the direction the wind is traveling. You can adjust your sail awkwardly, but it never seems to help in a dire situation. Almost every time I set sail, I would encounter this situation where the wind would work against me, leaving me helpless in the ocean for a bit. Your other option is using an oar to row. This may be a bit slower, but at least it consistently moves you in the direction you want to go. You don't have the option of switching up your approach until you make it to an island and hopefully have the items to craft a different type of boat. This design choice may seem less tedious if the world felt more alive, but many times it feels more significant than it does richer. Your main goal for each chapter is to simply come across three towers, which hold the key to unlocking the portal to the next chapter. There is no challenge or task you must complete in order to unlock these keys, you just have to find them. After playing the first chapter, I assumed this was a kind of tutorial, but unfortunately it is the same goal and process every time. Windbound is strongest when it has cryptic islands that hint at a much larger world. There was one island I came across late in the game that revealed several ancient passages as I explored. Sadly it was anticlimactic, as it didn't expand on the sense of discovery. Still, it was an intriguing lead up to something that had potential. The ethereal crossing at the end of each chapter was another strong point. Although not much actually happens, the water is turbulent and creates a sense of action with beautiful scenery and gorgeous music. The soundtrack and art design are where Windbound truly shines. While there are only a handful of musical tracks, each is used to great effect and was my personal favorite part of the game. To that effect, the lack of music at times heightens your surroundings and makes for a more pleasant experience. Furthermore, the sea and land are both vibrant and makes you want to explore everything they have to offer. I was amazed at times at how much this made up for some of the lackluster portions of the game.
In its early moments, Windbound had my attention and I was completely ready to discover more about this world. However, after the first chapter, I was left mostly disappointed with the lack of execution the game provides through its systems it introduces. A rather tedious travel system enhances this feeling. Through its colorful scenery and heartwarming soundtrack, there are some decent experiences to be found with the help of some fine tuning. Perhaps in the hands of the most diehard survival game fans, Windbound may catch a breeze, but it never truly set sail for me. Noisy Pixel gives Windbound a 6 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching! Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to bring you news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.